Hello everyone. I hope everyone's doing really well today. I'm feeling fantastic. The spring is coming. My tulip tree is pink and I'm just feeling quite optimistic about things. Erin, who was not feeling great yesterday, is back. So I'm so happy because I'm so much more comfortable when she's behind the camera than no one. <laughs> so it feels great to be here today. So if this is a big week for us again. April 1st is Thursday. That means it's launch day for the April So Confident Series 10 project. And I'm really excited about this project. I've been working on it for two or three months and we have all the fabrics in ready for the kits and so Thursday watch for that in your email box and for those of you who sign up by the month you'll see it as well uh, other those of you will send out an email to those of you who are not members of so confident series 10 yet you still have time to sign up for the year or the month but I think you're gonna like this one and I'm gonna show you the garment next Tuesday which I'm thinking is coming on to a year-ish from when we started these Facebook Lives, which sort of blows my mind. I'm gonna look back and see when we first started them, but I'm pretty sure it was April. So that means we're a year into this, and a year ago, if you'd asked me if, if I had 52 topics in my mind to do this, I would have said, no way, and here we are, and there seems to be plenty to talk about every week. So check out April 1st and then your live Zoom Q&A will be April 22nd on Thursday, and you always have a choice of a noon or a 6 p.m. Central Daylight Time. So I hope to see you then as well. So there's an evolution to how this story today begins, and it starts with my husband. My husband is a sporting clays guy. He goes out and shoots sporting clays. He used to be a hunter, now he's not doing that anymore. But he and his buddies trade stories about their equipment like you and I trade stories about our sewing machines and sergers and notions and stuff. And so last fall, he came home with a new gun. I promptly got a new serger. But at any rate, he brought the new gun in and the brand of that gun is Perazzi. And because he ordered this special gun from a special place. He got some tags that say Perazzi, several of them. And so he wanted me to make him a bag tag. So I got out some coated fabric that I had, little scraps, and I sewed this patch onto this and attached it to one of the hooks that we have. And I, I thought this was the finest thing, he thought this was the finest thing I had ever done for him. And so he promptly took it and attached it to his gun case and went shooting that day and came back with orders for about 30 of them. So I'm done making these, as I have said to him, but every man in Topeka, Kansas who shoots sporting clays just about has one of these bag tags. And that was sort of that. Okay. Then somewhere along the line, daughter Alex came home and she decided to start a boulder bag. Time wore on, she had a lot of friends to see, it may have been holidays, I'm not sure. She didn't finish it. So about two weeks ago, I actually got the materials out. She had cut it all up, sewed some of it, and I finished the bag, and so this is Alex's boulder bag. Well, I have glommed onto this bag now, and I love it, and she wants it, so we're having a little conversation about who's actually going to get this bag, but currently it's in Topeka, not Cleveland. So a couple of days ago, several days ago, I was carrying this bag out of the house and my husband, the shooter, says, well, I want one of those bags. I said, really? Okay. He said, yeah, when I go out to shoot and carry certain things, I, I want one of those. And I went, okay, well, I wonder what that should look like. And then I remembered that we have two or three fabrics that are coated fabrics reminding me of waxed cottons that come from that famous coat company out of Britain, Barbour. My husband has a couple of those jackets. Cabela's jackets, uh, Orvis jackets, you know, all those waxed outdoorsy jackets. And so we have a couple of fabrics that are just like that. 
And so I made my husband a boulder bag out of a fabric that's coated. It's not waxed, but it looks like it, and it behaves like it. But it does have this coating on it that makes it windproof and waterproof. And it just has that great sort of man outdoor look to it. I lined it in a really pretty lining fabric that brought out the blues. And then I actually put a little detail on it so that he can attach his bag tag. So this is my husband's boulder bag. And it brought up the whole idea of coated fabrics and how to sew them and how to use them. And for me, bags just seem to be the best place to utilize these particular fabrics, in addition to raincoats. But for now, we're going to talk about bags. And that reminded me that a while back, I think, Erin, you made this. Did you make this? We, can't, we don't know. Maybe I made it. Maybe Erin made it. We don't know. But this is another one of our bag styles called the downtown bag. And I love this bag because it has two ways of carrying it. Short handle, cross body. Of course, it has the zipper top and lined in a pretty fabric. And when you carry it, this folds over, and then there are some front zippers. So this is a great, I think, mostly crossbody bag, actually, because it lies flat when you have it on. So the downtown bag, which is this, and the boulder bag are two of my favorite bag patterns that we have that I think work great in coated fabrics. So let's look at these coated fabrics a little bit. We have the blue one. So it's a navy blue, twill weave on the back side, and then you can see there's a little bit of sheen to this, and that's the coating on the surface of it. But it's a twill weave, so it has a kind of canvas flavor to it. And it, the more you wear it, the more you work with it, the more you sew it, the more you work it, the better it becomes, because it softens and crumples and crinkles and looks vintage and just has that great man look about it, although I happen to like it as well. And then we have it in a green. Now, this is a little different weight. This is a slightly lighter weight one. And this is a herringbone weave. So if you can picture herringbone, also with a coating, this is a little bit lighter, not quite as stiff. But again, either one would really, really work for uh, the bags. We also have a linen in a mustard color that is laminated. Now, this is a different kind of coating. Probably not very different, but these coatings are very light. This is a little heavier coating. So this is laminated linen in this fabulous mustard color. This is stiffer, but again, we couldn't find the bag. We know where it is, we think, but we don't have the bag. I used to have a bag made out of this, and it also softens and crumples and wrinkles and looks really fantastic in a bag. All of these colors, the blue, the green, and the mustard, look great with the lining fabric that I used, which is kind of a, a light canvas weight. But I love this stripe. It looks great with the navy, the green, the gold. And it's kind of the perfect lining. It has that, just the right flavor of feel in this light canvas. The nice thing about the boulder bag is that there are there's a zipper on the inside, which I like very much, to be able to put something in here that you need to protect and not lose. It zips all the way across. So again, you can carry this as a shoulder bag. You could carry it as a um, cross body bag. And you can also just pick it up real quickly and carry it as a tote bag. So this is the bag that I use to carry to tennis. I also have a bag, another bag at home where I've sewn on an outer rectangle, left it <clears throat> open at the bottom and the top, and so I can slip this bag over my rolly bag as my carry-on. So it's a great travel bag. Just has a nice, great feel to it. 
so those are the coated fabrics that I have, those three fabrics, the navy, the dark olive, and the mustard. So I did a class for Craftsy, craftsy.com, that's still available, and it's called So You Can Sew That. Is that the name of the class? So You Can Sew That. So You Can Sew That. It's, sewing, it's all about tricky fa sewing tricky fabrics, and every lesson is about some different category of just some sort of odd, strange fabric. And there's a lesson in there on sewing coated fabrics that goes into a lot of detail about how to sew these fabrics. So check that out. I think Craftsy's having a sale right now, like 40% off all classes or something like that. I get emails from them almost daily, actually. So check that out. That's a great little class. I think it's kind of one of those sleeper kind of classes that you don't, oh, I don't need that. But there's a lot of information in there about sewing leather and coated fabrics and all of that in that lesson. We also have a tutorial uh, called Downtown Bags. And I, was, I took this off of our own website. And there are like 15 different things that are highlighted in this tutorial. Our tutorial is a PDF. You print it out. But it's everything from uh, adding a top zipper, a different kind of technique, creating a window opening zipper pocket, rounded raw corners, boxed corners, outside box corners, tucked corners, all kinds of details about how to sew a lot of different bags. And I think you would enjoy the downtown bag tutorial as well. So let's talk about sewing this fabric a little bit, just sort of the highlights. These are the things that I experienced while making the boulder bag with the navy blue. I was able to pin the fabric. It's not like the pin won't go through it, but you do need to be careful because a pin or a needle can actually mar the fabric if you use a pin that's too big or blunt. So I just didn't pin it. I used clips, the little... Um, I've kind of forgotten what they're called. Wonder clips. Wonder clips, yes, thank you. I wanted to cut out with a rotary cutter because I wanted smooth edges. Now granted, this bag is lined, so you don't see the interior of the bag. But if you're making something where you are going to see the interior of the bag, there's no reason to finish the edges of a seam because it doesn't ravel. So you want to have a nice, clean, sharp edge. So a rotary cutter will do that for you. For marking, no tailor tax this time. You're off the hook. You can use a little soap sliver or some kind of a water-soluble felt-tip pen, but something that can be removed. Um, and so you want to be careful about what you use, and you want to experiment on a scrap to make sure that whatever you mark it with is going to come out. I did experiment with needles. My universal needle worked. But if not, if you get some skip stitches, then you want to try out either some stretch or jeans or leather needles. Whatever will work for your fabric, on your machine, on the day you're sewing, because every day is different, I have found out with my sewing machine. Polyester thread, because it's stronger. And boy, you want to try to nail it first time, because I had to rip out a seam or two. In fact, this little loop at the edge of the boulder bag for the bag tag was an afterthought. So I ripped that seam from the outside so I could stuff that in there. And I realized I had to sew it really well because I could see the puncture holes of the needle of the previous seam. So you want to be careful and not try to rip out. Like if you have a pocket on the outside of a bag and you haven't sewn it very well, live with it. Or put another pocket over it that's bigger. Okay. Uh, for presser feet, um, I used a walking foot. Uh, but I had on hand a Teflon foot, a roller foot, a leather foot. I didn't happen to do much top stitching on this boulder bag, just at the top near the zipper. And I was able to control that pretty well with a zipper foot. But if I had been doing some top stitching, I know for sure I would have pulled out that Teflon foot so it would glide over the surface of that coated fabric. I think it depends on the extreme of the coating. The coatings on the olive and the navy are pretty light. On the Mustard, it's a little heavier, so a Teflon foot for sure is probably going to work best on that mustard. And there were times when I wanted to sew over tissue paper. Uh, otherwise, things were kind of, kind of torquing on me, so I used some tissue paper as an underlayment between the work and the throat plate. So for seam finishes, you have a couple of options. You can just do a plain seam and leave it 
which is what I did pretty much on the side seams of the bag. Now that particular fabric pressed pretty well. You want to be very careful with pressing on the surface of the coating because it could melt. So you want to use your press cloth. I used a double layer of organza so I could see the seam, but I wanted a little more protection than just a single layer. Now, if I had not wanted, a, a, a common seam finish is to press the seam open, use some rubber cement, believe it or not, to glue the seams down, press those seams with a wallpaper roller, and then top stitch. If you don't want to top stitch and you know you're going to line something, then just do the rubber cement and glue them down. It'll stay just fine. There probably are new glues that work better, but I learned how to do this so, so many years ago that rubber cement was kind of common. That's how old I am. Nobody uses rubber cement much anymore, but I still have it on hand and it still works great. I went to a leather making bag class years and years ago in Santa Fe from a famous leather bag maker out of Denver and that's what she used and I've used it ever since. So you notice that I, I sewed that with the tissue paper underneath and I haven't ripped it off yet but I was able to get a really flat top stitch seam. When I tried it without the paper I got some some pulling and some torquing. So we have a really nice and interesting way to do a flat felt seam at the sewing workshop. And I learned this from a teacher in San Francisco whose name I have forgotten. I wish I could give her credit. But it's a fantastic way to do a flat felt seam. So the seam looks really good on the right side of the fabric and on the wrong side of the fabric. You either choose to have a single layer of stitching, a single line of stitching showing, or a double, depending on, in, in shirtings, it makes a difference whether, uh, you know, sh men's shirts have the double row, women's shirts have the single row. I can't really tell you why that is. But at any rate, I'm going to show you how we do it because it's a really cool technique. You know, the normal way to make a flat felt seam is to sew a seam, trim one layer, and then try to tuck the layer, another layer, over the seam. Well, that is so darn hard. So this is a way to do it really easily. Now, I'm exaggerating the width of a seam here so that you can see it. So on one side, you would fold one half of a seam allowance. So say you're using half inch seam allowances on bags, you would, so you would press a quarter of an inch. And if you're worried about the exact sizing and fitting, then you would cut off the quarter inch off of the corresponding piece. I sometimes don't bother to do that because it's pretty minuscule when it's all said and done. But for math purposes, that's what you would do. Fold one half on one side, cut away one half of the seam allowance on the other side. So assuming this side has been cut, I'm going to go right sides together and tuck this into where I have folded this back. Just slip that in to that crease. And now I'm going to sew. So I would sew right along this fold. Not, I said that wrong. I'm going to sew along this raw edge. That's not a fold right there, that's a raw edge. Got to get my lingo going here. So that is sewn. So now we're going to open this up and allow this to fold over. And now I would sew along this fold. And that is a completely concealed and perfectly flat, flat felt seam. So on this side, there would be two rows of stitching. And on this side, there would be one. Hope you can picture that. 
So that's a flat field seam sewing workshop method. Okay. So that's sewing coated fabrics, which of course has brought up the whole idea of people are beginning to think about traveling again. Whether it's by car, RV, plane, cruise, whatever, we're getting in the spirit a little bit. And hopefully sometime in 2021, maybe 2022, we're all going to be on the road again. So these coated fabrics are going to come in handy. But it also brought up this whole spirit of fabrics and things that remind me of travel. So, you know I'm into watercolor now. And yesterday, I got the Metropolitan Museum of Art catalog. And on the cover is a little watercolor. Now, I only bring you this, not because this has much to do with travel, but because watercoloring has been one of the hobbies that has blossomed in this time of being home. And I'm now possessed, and I'm following all of these people, and I'm realizing that lots of the big fashion companies and other companies as well are featuring watercolor artists as their covers, they're designing fabrics, they're, des they're selling paintings, they're doing illustration work for all kinds of people. And if you keep your eyes open, you'll see watercoloring as a lot of illustration in a lot of printed media. And at the same time, I've been taking classes from various people. So I'm not going to show you in detail my work, but I am going to show you two pieces. For instance, I took a little watercolor class over the weekend on a building in Rome. Now this is a little uh, urban sketch, they call it, that I did in about 30 minutes. It's a piazza in Rome. And I did a little other uh, watercolor of the Eiffel Tower by another person. So if you're into watercolors, then, and you want to think about traveling, travel-related topics are all over the place. And these two guys are really good watercolor artists. They are urban sketchers. It's a whole movement of a whole range of people all over the world who are doing fabulous urban sketching of places that you and I would like to visit. So those are their websites and their names. So we have some travel fabrics. Deb made this fantastic London shirt you know, we're going to London in September with our textile tour. And this is uh, the London shirt, which has this fantastic asymmetric these side seams and a back that swings out a little bit and creates this nice detail at the hem. It's a very simple shirt to make, simple collar, simple sleeve, but of course the fabric makes it. And this is a fabric of a map. There are all kinds of, of people doing stitch work that are mapping things. They're mapping their walks. They're, map, they're mapping where they were born. They're mapping their towns. They're mapping their parks. They're mapping their zoos. And they're doing it in a stitch. And this just kind of reminded me of this. So this is this fabric, a, a wonderful cotton fabric. There's all kinds of great writing on this, most of which I can't understand. But it is the Atlantic Ocean, and there are various uh, points on this uh, that are defined, some routes, shipping routes and so forth, and I just think this is really fantastic. It's a beautiful feel of a cotton, very lightweight, smooth finish, beautiful. Then we have the cottage shirt. Now this reminds me a lot of the urban sketching. The whole idea of painting building fronts, cathedrals, spires, streets, street scenes, bicycles, flowers. This is so popular in the whole urban sketching genre. And this is the cottage shirt. So, you know, if you want to get away and go to, your, go to a cottage, rent a cottage and get away, perfect. Or you can make your cottage shirt in a fun sketch type fabric and get your getaway <clears throat> in that regard. I have on the detour jacket. I didn't realize all these names kind of had to do with travel. So take a detour and uh, make the detour jacket 
in this map fabric, which is here. Not very much of this left, but it has, not sure what all this has actually, but again, this is upside down, but you know, globes, maps, some almost um, uh, twall like background actually with scenes of people in parks, very subtle. But you, this is a Dupioni. And Kathy made this garment actually, lined it in blue which is unexpected for what the outer fabric is. And she did this embroidery. So this embroidery was inspired by something that she'd seen and she chose the blue and the coral. And it reminds me of coral. So it reminds me of the sea and fishing and snorkeling and all of that. So this is kind of the, the getaway detour jacket. Are those my only garments? I think it is. Yes, okay. So those are the three um, fabrics. Um, so this is a fabric that, uh, a nice cotton print. And again, this, this reminds me of sort of a, uh, a seaside scene with the palm trees and some condos and high rises near the ocean with the boats and the flora and fauna of that uh, uh, Miami, perhaps, Florida, sort of getaway. Very refreshing colors in blues and yellows. Now, this isn't exactly traveling in terms of maps, but this is a Liberty of London cotton, so you know that this is a really, really, really beautiful cotton. And I love this, the tropical aspect of this. Just this incredible overall tropical print. Big leaves. This looks like a painting. This looks like a watercolor. I wish I could paint this well. But in, in, when you see this up close, there are shadows. It's, it's like you put the watercolor on and it, and it bloomed, as they call it. That's the term in watercolor, where the color just runs. And you, it's, you don't really know what's going to happen. But it looks like it's hand painted. Over here we have, this is actually a knit a cotton jersey. Kind of tissue weight, but look at those fantastic tropical motifs to this. The plant life, the stems, the leaves, flowers and ferns and fantastic colors with the pinks and blues. This one is another sort of sketch street scene. This is probably London. I'm not sure if there's actually what this is, but if I were to guess, I think this looks like London. And this is a rayon, 100% viscose, so this is drapey, and has a little crepe background to it. So this would make any of these garments, the detour as a shirt, the cottage shirt, the London shirt, any of these fabrics would make any of these garments. And then there's this one. Another street scene, has a few umbrellas, so street scene, beach scene, definitely a getaway fabric. And this is cotton, I believe, maybe it's rayon, let me look, 100% cotton. But look at this, this look how dra drapey this is, that's unusual for cotton, so it's really beautiful. This is an, a fabric that we get from Italy, printed in Italy, and it just has a beautiful, beautiful feel to it. This is not quilting cotton, this is garment cotton. And then I love this one. For some reason, this reminds me of Kansas, flying over Kansas. In an airplane, you look down, you see the fields. Some are plowed, some are not, some are planted. And again, this is sort of a mapping, trail-like uh, motif. But dark, dark, dark olive green with a little bit of aqua in it, and of course, the off-white. So this is a fun cotton as well. This is a cotton out of Japan and they make the best. I'm sorry, that's not true. Not Japan, I don't know where it's from. I thought it was from another company. But anyway, a little scenic, scenic cotton. 
<clears throat> if you're not into making garments at the moment, you can only muster up a small something or other. Take one of these fabrics and make a book cover. Give it to a friend who is traveling so they can take this, take their journal, take their watercolors, take their sketch pad and put it in here and put their pencils in there and make a little book cover. That project is part of a book that I wrote years ago called So Easy. And there are 12 projects in here, all on little cards. Here's the book cover with the instructions of how to make it. It's very simple, very easy. Sometimes I'm just not up for the whole idea of making an entire garment. I can't, I can't wrap my arms around it, it's too much. But a little something like this, either for yourself, a family member, or a friend, is a really nice thing to do. Or you could even do it with the scraps after you've made the detour jacket, make the book cover. So the So Easy book has lots of fun projects in it, including another bag, which is this bag, a little different shape, but again, a nice tote bag. All right, so I think we have it done. So this is what's on sale this week. The Boulder bag, the downtown bag, detour jacket, and by the way, you could make this lengthened. If you're a member of So Confident Series 9, we taught you how to lengthen this jacket. This would make a great raincoat in one of these uh, coated materials. The London shirt, the cottage shirt, and then don't forget about that downtown bags tutorial. And the other thing that's on sale is all, some, uh, all of our bag hardware. These are two clips that are from a really, really fine Italian bag making company. And you can do these either on the outside of the bag. I use this one actually to attach to a long thread of something, fabric or ultra suede or whatever, and I put it inside of the bag and attach my keys to it so that when I get off the plane, I don't have to search for my car keys. And then we have several D-rings, only ours are rectangular. We have D-rings and sliders, which is what you need for the downtown bag in both polished chrome and in antique brass. And then we have a different size also in antique brass and the chrome one, which for some reason didn't get in my hands. <clears throat> so those are on sale as well. And if you send in any order this week that we have to ship to you, we're going to send you free, did you hear that word? Free, one yard of laminated linen. Any order that is to be shipped. So that means if you order a download pattern, you're not going to get it. But if you order a printed pattern or a piece of fabric or some hardware or all of those, you're going to get this as part of your package. Okay, do you have any questions? Yes, um, for the um, folder bag, um, and you fit your tennis rackets in that. Yeah, um, I have one bag that I actually have a divider in. I can put two rackets in here, but you also could do a whole shape on this. I've thought about doing that, and I just haven't done it, but I thought, is this, is her name Carol that's asking this? I, I don't remember. It was towards the beginning, and I didn't okay. want to forget to ask you. I have a lot of tennis you. fans, you know. I'm a tennis player. <laughs> but at any rate, you can do a whole racket shape on this and, with a zipper and put one, two rackets. Yes, this is a great tennis bag. When I play tennis on Tuesdays at 5 o'clock, and so I'm always bringing my clothes, my rackets to the office. And, of course, I can't use this one. This is Craig's. But uh, my other one at home is my tennis bag. <laughs> Okay, um, on the coated fabrics, is the shiny side the right side? The shiny side of the coated fabric is the right side. I suppose it wouldn't have to be, but that's the idea of it, because that's the layer that's going to keep this repellent for moisture, water, and windproof as well. Um, you mentioned using rubber cement. Um, do you let it dry beforehand to make sure the needle doesn't get gunked up? Oh, yeah, you would want to let it set up a little bit before you sewed it, yeah. 
Okay, somebody did mention that rubber cement now doesn't have the same aroma. <laughs> that's what I Good. always remember about <laughs> I rubber know, cement. That's true. My um, old jar still <laughs> smells, so it lasts a long time. So does mine, so I wonder when it's from. Yeah. Uh, college, maybe. Um, let's see. Um, can you, um, what fab or what patterns could you use? You mentioned the detour for the coated fabrics, but what other patterns could oh, you use I actually, for a raincoat? I almost coat? showed you today a Quincy jacket that I had lengthened. I did a Facebook Live a while back and showed you a Quincy jacket ab above the knee with a zipper, and I thought that would make a fantastic rain jacket. So that, the detour, uh, the, the, the Zen jacket, so it has a you know, pretty high collar, longer. Um, the Chicago jacket would be great in a coated fabric. Um, I probably wouldn't do the flat iron because the wrong size shows maybe too much. That probably wouldn't be my, at the top of my list. I would say those are the best ones. Okay, uh, what size detour are you wearing? That's a good question. Kathy made this. I suspect it's a small. Probably. <clears throat> when um, I make one, the sleeves are a little short on this, which tells me that it may be one size either too small for me or I need to lengthen the sleeves. Um, I, I've, I have a million mediums in my closet at home, but I think this is a small. Um, how is the coated fabric different from the laminated linen? I'd say that it's... Um, Boy, at first, the laminated linen is stiffer than these. But having made a lot of things out of this laminated linen, from bags to, we used to have a Soho coat pattern, and if you still have that, that'd be a great raincoat, by the way. But it's a discontinued pattern. I know that that fabric really breaks down and softens. So over time, there's not going to be much different. And since this is the first thing I've made out of this, I can tell this is going to break down and get wonderfully rumpy as well. So I'd say it's just a little bit less stiff to begin with, but that would be about it. They're very, very similar in character. There, to me, there's no difference. This is cotton. This is linen. The laminated's linen. The coateds are cotton. Uh, that'd be a difference, but that doesn't play, you know, it doesn't have any effect on how you would use it, sew it or what patterns you would make, probably. Um, can you use the striped fabric um, for a jacket or a blouse, the, what you use for the lining? I think this would make a great jacket. Um, it's a, it, would, it would take the right blouse. This is, to me, a little stiff for a blouse, but a jacket would be great, lined or unlined. Yeah. Do you have the watercolor-like fabric available um, in a shirt on the dress form? No. We tried to get more of this fabric, but we can't. Oh, that's what they're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a fabric that came out of Japan. We had it. It's gone. I tried to order more. It's not available. It's not made anymore. Mm -hmm. but I think I a couple of these would be very similar. Yeah. I think they have the same flavor. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Um, what patterns would you, oh, sorry, we're continuing. Oh, I was just going to, yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, the knit at the top there, huh? um, what patterns would you use? You said it was tissue weight. Yeah, I would make a London or a cottage or a detour. If I were making a detour, I would underline this in just another tissue weight knit. Um, this is also make great pants. I saw some big floral pants this morning from a company out of Italy. Um, this would make a really great Alex top or an olive top. A flowy, a, a swing tee. Um, it's almost like I need to have a, sh a poster of our patterns. <laughs> Um, I think any of our knit yeah, any of patterns our, yeah. would, be, would be great. I agree. Mm -hmm. um, would you do pants out of some of these prints? Let me back up for just okay. a second. Mm -hmm. Last week I showed a pink 
and white stripe knit. We still have mm. some of that. That would be a really pretty companion with this. Either, let's say you were making the Alex top in this and put the stripe through here, or the binding, or the sleeves. So maybe this isn't every piece of the pattern. We're seeing a lot of contrasting sleeves and insertions and that sort of thing. So uh, the, qu the question was, oh, pants? Well, I tell you what, I would make pants in any of these. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing fab, you know, those joggers, um, you know, drawstring pants, the Chesney pants, West End pants. Yeah, Bit, you know, really fun color. This is, you know, we're coming out of this, this time of, of isolation, lockdowns, whatever you want to call it, and the predictions are color is exploding. We are ready for color. And so that's what this is all about. Okay. And the last question is just asking about yardage for the Liberty. So I think maybe Betsy can include a link okay. to that. Um, that is all the questions that I see. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, watch for Thursday's announcement on the April project. And we'll see you next week.